Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to reflect the gospel of the 23rd Sunday in ordinary time in year A. We are reflecting from the gospel of Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 20. The three readings for this Sunday have as a common concern fraternal life, life together with our loved ones, with our friends, with our neighbors. Conflicts often have as their starting point wounds in need of healing, refusals to forgive, injustices committed. So resentment and hatred gradually take hold of hearts. It is enough to see how fragile is peace in the world The word of God on this Sunday invites us to seriously examine our relationship with one another. It reminds us how important is dialogue as the first step towards reconciliation and peace. The gospel offers us two points for reflection, which are timely since they touch on two important aspects of our concrete life. our relationship with others and our relationship with God. Let us reflect on the first point, our relationships with others. The first way points to the responsibility we have towards each other. By describing a way of doing things already present in the Old Testament, the gospel highlights this responsibility. The Old Testament is represented by the words of the prophet Ezekiel that we read in the first reading. God, but if you want the wicked man trying to turn him from his way and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself and God. And in the New Testament, we have this clear invitation from Jesus in today's gospel. Quote, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. And if he listens to you, you have won over your brother. Unquote. This is the message. We cannot say in our relationship with others, I stay locked up in my cocoon. I cannot be indifferent. Relationships involve contacts, words, exchanges, dialogue. We thus become responsible and open people. The second way is relationships with God. The second way concerns our relationship to God. It is of course prayer that is at the concern here. Prayer is an exchange between God and us. This exchange takes place in the innermost part of ourselves. Pray to your father in secret, Jesus tells us. and do not do like the pharisees who do it to be seen and here in this passage from today's gospel jesus adds something to praying in secret praying in secret is completed by prayer in common such as holy mass or even on pilgrimage in the family or prayer in our groups of christians who meet What Jesus is saying here is that there is something special about praying together. When two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. It is a real presence of Jesus in the praying community. By praying together with others, we come out of our secret prayer. When we pray together, Jesus is with us in our midst. It is very beautiful. 
this promise of Jesus allows us to reflect and consider our ways. Dear friends, do we think of praying together in the movements, in the Catholic associations, in the pastoral teams to which we belong? Do husband and wife pray together for a few moments with young children instead of just listening to them, do we pray with them? In any case, Jesus here tells us that we must not be afraid to come together to pray. Even more, he tells us that there is a special strength because he is in the midst of the community of people who pray together. Jesus teaches us that we have a responsibility for each other. Even more so when it comes to the smallest and the weakest. In closing, I would like to hear narrate a story that could help us better understand the timeliness of this gospel, the message of this gospel. This is a short story composed by the novelist, the writer, Ernest Hemingway. In this story, a Spanish father puts an advertisement in the local newspaper, hoping that his son, who has fled his father's house after a crime, can hear his call. He had this test put in large print on a full page of the newspaper. It reads, Dear Paco, Please, come meet me tomorrow at noon in front of the newspaper office. All is forgiven. Your dad who loves you. The next day, the father shows up at the agreed place, hoping to see his son there, but there is a crowd gathered in front of the newspaper office. They are nearly 800 young men, all called Paco, and they are there in the hope of seeing their father, whose call they have heard. Who knows, through our outstretched hands, our attentive listening, our tender advice, if we will not allow a Paco to find his way home and his dignity as a child of God, and thus affirm ourselves as true disciples of Jesus. May dialogue, reconciliation, Unity and peace reign in our church and in our world. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.